butt done too. Uh, okay, oh, we're good. My arm is having yeah. a worse. Just this one. Like, um, when the Iceman was discovered in the Austrian Alps, um, he had two types of mushrooms with it. With right. him. And this he, has, is, he had this mushroom, yeah. Hamadou, yeah. which is the fire starter mushroom that enabled humans to migrate into colder environments. The wood conch is called the fire starter or tinder uh, conch because you put embers of fire in it and carry fire over distances. And if your clan needed to have fire to survive, and we ended Europe, we discovered winter, <laughs> unusual. But if you couldn't have fire, then your clan would die. So the fire keeper of the tribe was incredibly important for human survival. And the knowledge of keeping fire alive was resident in the knowledge of polypore mushrooms, especially Amadou, which is extremely flammable. My hat, by the way, is extremely flammable. So don't so, get near me if you so smoke. So on the one hand, it, it could, you, you can use the, the fibers and the mycelium to start fires, but you can use the outer hard shell to carry fires. To carry right? fires, right. So it's, you know, the analogy could be just like a you know, piece of wood versus paper, you know, or whatever. So the more surface area, the more flammable the, the material is. So Amadou is one, you know, they had, he also had... Uh, the, uh, another birch polypore called Piptoporus betulinus, uh, the bootstrap mushroom. This is the only mushroom that I know of that will sharpen steel. It's a relatively soft mushroom, but when it's in a ball form, you can cut it, dry it a little bit in the sun, it gets leathery, and it's actually called the bootstrap mushroom because of sharpened steel. I mean, how many mushrooms do you know can sharpen steel? This is the, and we know about the fact that this sharpened steel from the common name translated, translated from the ancient German. So, I mean, if this mushroom was not called the bootstrap mushroom, I bet you not too many, this knowledge would not have survived. But linguistically, it has survived. Agaricon, the one I mentioned before, is called the Elixirium ad longum vitum. 2,000 years ago, the elixir of long life. And our research now, it's ironic, 2,000 years after this mushroom was discovered to be medicinal, we were just looking at it for its, you know, new pharmacological activities against viruses and bacteria. How dumb are we? <laughs> 2,000 years to get around to the subject that our ancestors discovered. Yeah. So how many other species are there that we haven't even begun to discover? Yeah. So my hope is that there's going to be a mycelial revolution, a revolution in the sciences using fungi. And one of the, my biggest, the biggest, one of the most focused points that I can make is that the University of Washington, the Department of Astrobiology, is better funded than the Department of Mycology. Now, I like astrobiology. I think there are organisms in outer space. Probably are. I don't know of any yet. But we know in the field, uh, in the, on this planet, we have one to two million species of fungi, less than 10% of which have been identified. It seems to me that we have misprioritized. We've romanticized the concept of organisms being out of space while ignoring in our very home, in our backyard, the ecosystems are collapsing all around us due to our ignorance of these fungal uh, entities that are present within us and around us. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Let's